Keith Rock here at VengeMachinery.org. So I uh, got another little project here. We're working on our steam locomotive out here at the Georgia Museum of Agriculture. This is a 1917 Vulcan Ironworks air gauge uh, locomotive, uh, made in 1917. It's been restored and being used here at the museum for many years now. But every year in August, we do a lot of maintenance and work on this because the museum site's closed down for about a month. And uh, we had a whole list of maintenance things that need to be done to this. And got another little project I think you guys will be interested in that I'm going to be involved with. And uh, we're going to get in here and tell you about it. So we're over here on the front of the locomotive, and uh, this is what's called the smoke box in the very front. And uh, when you open this door up on the front and look inside, uh, hopefully you can see up in there, but uh, if not, we'll get in here just a little bit closer. In fact, let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit closer. So we're looking inside the uh, smoke box now, and uh, just to kind of orient you and let you know what's going on. So right back here, if you look, we got all these uh, tubes coming out. These are the tubes in the boiler, what they call fire tubes. On the other side of these, is the actual firebox where the fire is built. And all the smoke and fire and everything goes up through these tubes and uh, into the smoke box and up through the smokestack up above. So behind this uh, sheet right here, uh, this whole area is flooded with water and you've got all the contact area around these tubes uh, that the heat is coming in contact with the water. Uh, so basically here again, coming out of this is gonna be smoke, ash, uh, whatever's coming out from the fire. And once it gets up in the front here, it's just going up the smokestack. It's pretty much done what it's going to do as far as heating up the water. Uh, but also right here, uh, across the top of the boiler, inside the boiler, um, about halfway down, there's the dome on the top, the steam dome. And that's where the dry steam comes out. And uh, the dry steam uh, goes through a throttle valve that can be controlled within the cab that basically opens and closes to allow steam to come out. And it comes out this pipe. This is called the dry pipe uh, as it's going through the boiler. It comes out the front here into this T and uh, you see these pipes. This is a steam pipe that basically goes down inside the smoke box. And down here in the bottom, uh, this is, goes to the cylinder. So these are going to go to the cylinders on the right hand side of the train. Of course we're looking at it so it's backwards. And then there's another one just like this that goes on this side and it goes down to a valve down here in the bottom that goes to the uh, left side of the train, uh, left engine. Uh, the problem we've had in here is we've noticed that down here on this bottom joint uh, there was a steam leak where the, it couples together. Let me zoom you in on that where you can see it. I think it's out of frame. So we're looking at the bottom of the steam pipe now where it goes into the uh, casting down to the engines on either side. So down here uh, on the other side, it was leaking steam. There's a little, uh, what's called a uh, steam pipe ring right here, and it was leaking around that steam pipe ring, and we were getting a lot of uh, uh, steam in the, inside the smoke box, and it wasn't ever making it. And you could see the white kind of blowing up against the side over here. So over here on this side, we've actually taken the steam pipe out and uh, pulled in and we're looking at the steam pipe rings and uh, that's where we found the problem. And but I wanted to kind of show you this, so you kind of see where it all goes and uh, we'll probably get it all back installed here uh, toward the end of the video. But let me take you in here now and show you the actual steam pipe rings and what the problems are. So this is the actual uh, steam pipe that we took out from the locomotive. And uh, this is the bottom part that goes down. And um, what you got again is, is you got this ring that fits in here. And this actually goes into that bottom part down there. And this is the problem. I'm gonna zoom in real tight so you can actually see this. We talked before about steam uh, cutting through parts and uh, actually eroding away material. This is a classic example. So this is the steam pipe ring that was on the bottom. And uh, the problem is, is that it didn't seal up right about in here. This, there was a, this right along and through this line, you can kind of see is where that, it made it on the inside. And there was a tiny little hole right here. And over time, the steam has literally just cut away around that. You can, it almost looks like it was hit with a grinder, but that's actually where the steam has cut away through that little tiny hole where it was escaping and uh, it's eroded away. This uh, steam pipe ring right here, uh, I, I'm, I'm almost 100% sure that it's not original to this locomotive. I think this was one uh, that was made to replace one at some point in time. Uh, the one over here next to it, this is uh, the one that was on the top. This one could possibly be original. Uh, again, I'm not 100% sure, uh, but when they made this one, it was not made properly. And that's the reason we're seeing this. And I want to talk a little bit about uh, 
how that this joint, how this fitting needs to be made properly and uh, what we're going to do to fix it. So I went through and dug through a bunch of my old steam books that I have in my personal library and um, found several that talked about this one, but this book here uh, really kind of drives the point home. And um, this is, uh, let's find the front page here where you can see the title. So this is called Catechism of the Locomotive uh, by uh, Matthias uh, Forney, uh, originally published in 1879, and this is a uh, actual copy from roughly that era. Uh, but when you get over in here, uh, let me open up to this page right here. This, uh, this shows the problem that we've got. So this is just an illustration showing a, a steam pipe joint uh, where you would basically have two flat fittings that would butt up with one another and you tighten it up. Well, the problem is, is that particularly on like this uh, uh, steam pipe that we've got here is getting these things to line up just right. Uh, you can imagine um, getting it in there where you have two surfaces that are flat, that perfectly mate and they're exactly right. When you build a boiler and put it onto a locomotive, things just aren't gonna line up perfectly. And then you've also got the issue that as you fire that locomotive, uh, you're going to have expansion and contraction based on the temperature and these joints are going to be actually moving around to a certain extent. So to get around this problem, what they came up with is that instead of having a flat joint, they would actually put a radius in here and you can kind of see the dashed line there. And this kind of makes a ball and socket type joint and that allows for that to self align and uh, move around. Uh, and then they went a step further from this design where it was actually machined into the parts to where they put this, what they call a steam pipe ring in here, where you have that same ball and socket on one side, but the back side is flat. And what that allows you to do is you can actually move it around and position it in that ball met way. But on the back side here, where you have this flat surface, you can also, that can move around. It doesn't have to be perfectly aligned. So you can move it around a little bit to get it where it's you have alignment in both directions. So the steam pipe ring is where our problem is. According to my books, and I've got multiple books that talk about this, I've also talked to some experts in the field, and everybody out there is telling me these steam pipe rings need to be made out of cast iron. The steam pipe ring that we have here that's given us a problem is actually not made out of cast iron. This one is cast, uh, but this one looks like it's made, it, made out of either brass or bronze. You can kind of see it's non-ferrous. I believe this is probably made out of some, um, I'm guessing like a bronze bushing type material. Um, so it was softer, number one. And the other thing that they didn't do right on this is that if you look at this fitting, I'll tell you, let me get a straight edge. So here you go, if you look here, it's actually got a radius on there. That's not a flat surface. So that radius is machined into that. Whereas uh, the one that's a replacement, that's just a flat 30 degree angle. It's not a radius, there's no radius to it whatsoever. So this one here, I think what happened is because it didn't have the proper radius in it, uh, you didn't get a good seal in this little tiny space and over years of use, it just started eroding away from a tiny hole and basically made it into a larger hole. So we're gonna make two new steam pipe rings. Uh, this one while, uh, it's not terrible, it's, it's seen its better days, and I think we're just gonna make two new ones, go ahead and replace both of them. Uh, you know, this one here's a little bit thicker, and I think you could do that, depending on how much room you needed. That's one of the nice things, is that you can machine these down to make them thinner or larger, uh, depending on your actual needs. Again, getting in there and finding what you need and just making it work, so. Uh, we're going to definitely make one, probably go ahead and make two of them and uh, probably replace both of them when we do it. Uh, at the same time, before we can do these, we're going to have to get in there and rework those surfaces on the inside uh, to match this radius uh, to get it back to a fresh surface. And we'll probably do that by lapping. Uh, there's really about the only way we can get it done uh, because we can't take anything off in there without major, major uh, undertaking. So there's the problem. Uh, there's a little bit of the background. Now let's get to our solution, making some new steam pipe rings. So to make these new steam pipe rings, we uh, acquired us a little billet here. This is a uh, ductile cast iron. Uh, this is extruded material. It's not truly cast, but the material is uh, basically cast iron and, uh, and then ductile cast iron, which the difference between ductile and regular gray cast iron is, is that there's some additives in this 
uh, ductile that just makes it a lot stronger, a le lot less brittle and less likely to crack or break if you were to drop it or something along those lines. Uh, and I, I like working with ductile when I can because it's just a more durable material. So that's what we're going to make them out of. Uh, and we'll just put this in the lathe and uh, get the machining. So let's get this set up in the lathe and get to work. Now right, we got this on the lathe. Uh, ready to start going with it. I'm going to start by uh, coming in here and facing off the front. Give me a good flat surface on the front. work on an area about three inches deep here. Uh, we don't need this whole piece. I'll give us plenty of material to work off of. So I'm just going to put a little witness mark on there to know how far I want to go down. And start machining it off. needs to be uh, about three and three quarter inches and we're just a little over four right now so we got a good uh, 300 thousandths to come off of there. So looking at the originals here, we're about a uh, three inch, 780 is about what they're measuring, give or take a little bit. I've measured both of them and they're both in that same ballpark. So we're gonna shoot for copying that and let's see where we're at. We've got about 65 thousandths to take off. close enough uh, for what we're doing so I'm happy with that dimension. Next thing we need to do is start drilling and boring out the uh, inside. That's good enough to start. Start with just a uh, drill bit of this around a half inch and uh, we'll get a hole started. Move up a size drill, this one's about a one inch. I think you probably need to slow it down just a little bit. bottomed out there. Oh, we've moved up to a two inch drill bit. I've slowed down my speed a little bit here. Let's see how this goes. Tell you what, I think I'm gonna do another size in between there. I've stepped down to an inch and a half. Let's see how this one does. Back 
to the two inch drill bit. The total size of the bore needs to be two and a half inches. Uh, it's two inches as big as I've got on drill bits, so we'll have to bore the rest out. this out. We want to take that inside hole to two and a half inches. So uh, we'll take about a hundred thousandths total. Two, four, six, eight, ten. So that's a fifty thousandths cut. Hundred thousandths total diameter. And pour on out. We're shooting for two and a half inches, but this is not a critical measurement. I'm just going to measure with the calipers, and uh, we've got about 300 thousandths to go. So take another hundred. about a thousandth uh, over, uh, which is plenty fine. So uh, that's exactly what I was shooting for actually, so uh, we're good to go there. First the next thing we're gonna do is go ahead and, and machine this bevel on here. And again, I know that um, we're gonna put a radius on there, but it's all gonna be based on this 30 degree angle. So we're gonna start by just putting a 30 degree straight bevel on there. Uh, so I've got my compound set to 30 degrees. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and do that by hand. So the next step here, guys, is we need to put a slight radius on this. And uh, if you look at this original one here, uh, it's a very, you can barely even see it. If you put a straight edge on there, you can see it rock. Uh, we did some calculations. We took a 30 degree angle, put a tangent basically on these four pieces and calculated that radius in CAD. And it came out to like 3.1 something inches of a radius. So about a, you know, about a six and a quarter inch um, spear, if you were to think. So, you know, it's a pretty big radius. And quite honestly, it's not 
super critical that be exactly right. What is important is that the radius that we put on here matches what's in locomotive, and we'll lap these together to, to get that. And I've talked with some other guys who have made these uh, uh, steam pipe rings before, and they're saying, you know, if you got a big radius tool, great. If you got CNC, great. That's the way to do it. I don't have that. They said, ah, we just take a sander and uh, kind of just put a little bit of radius in there and call it good enough. And um, that's basically what I'm going to do here. So I've got a angle grinder uh, with a sanding disc on it right here. And uh, we're just going to come in here and we're just going to kind of massage this by hand and uh, get a radius in there. So uh, let's turn the lathe on and get it done. I'm sitting here, I can eyeball that angle or that radius very well at my perspective. And that matches pretty darn close to what we got. Uh, I'm not real happy with the finish on there. So I think we're gonna get some emery cloth and just kind of uh, polish this a little bit. Uh, we got a pretty bad, nasty burr on the inside there. We need to get that cleaned up. So uh, let me get that done. I'm ready to part this off now and uh, have that one piece already. Uh, I measured the thickness this needs to be. It needs to be 950,000. So what I'm going to do is come in here with my parting tool and uh, we're going to try to get the front edge of this with, with the edge of that. And again, this is not a super critical measurement, but I'm just going to lay that across there and we're going to come in until it just touches right there come off. I'm going to put a dial indicator down here on the lathe. Now we got our indicator zero. This is a one inch travel indicator. So we're going to 950. That's 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, 700, 800, 950 right there. I'm going to lock my carriage in place and we will part it off. We got our first one pretty much made here. I think after I get it out of the chuck, we're gonna just clean face that, lightly face the back of that, just clean it up real good, make sure we got a good flat surface. Um, you know, I went ahead and did the bore in the outside long, deep enough where I could make two of these. So I'm gonna go ahead now and make the second one. And uh, we've already got most of it set up. I'll do that off camera. And uh, we'll be ready to start lapping these in. So here we go with the finished uh, steam pipe rings. Uh, we got a nice radius on those. These are the right size. Uh, so the next step in this whole process is going to be lapping uh, these uh, steam pipe rings uh, into the actual locomotive to make them fit just right. And to do that, I need a little adapter to hold these. And uh, we're going to actually do this using a power method. Uh, I found an article like in a 1915 uh, trade journal uh, for steam locomotive engineers and, and maintenance people that talks about building something exactly like this. And we're going to just use a drill to actually power this thing rather than doing it by hand. Uh, and it has in there a little some instructions on making an adapter. Uh, they made theirs out of wood. We're going to make ours out of Delrin here, uh, which is just a plastic material. So basically what I'm going to do is we're just going to turn uh, this down where this, this uh, steam pipe ring will fit up on there. Uh, it needs to be more or less a press fit so we'll hold it in place. And um, below that, it's just gonna have a little stem sticking out that will fit down inside the uh, piece of pipe that will kind of guide this to keep it lined up. Uh, and we'll put a hole through it and um, I've got this little adapter here. And uh, basically all this is is just a um, quarter inch drive ratchet extension that we cut in half and we put threads on one end and that's going to go down through it 
and tighten up on the bottom and that way we can hook this up to a uh, quarter inch drive extension set. One of the things it talked about in the article was it needed to have a universal joint on there to let it kind of wiggle around and I had a quarter inch drive universal joint. So uh, this is actually something that I did a while back for a similar type project and I saved it so I don't have to make this uh, but that's how I did it. I just cut one in half and the other half of this uh, extension uh, will basically chuck up in the drill and go on this side so you get to use both sides and we just use the cheapo import uh, extension to make that out of. So we're going to get in here now and uh, start turning this. I'm going to face this down. We'll turn it to the press uh, fit diameter, probably a thousandth or two oversize, and then we'll turn that down a little bit for a stem that's going to stick out probably about an inch and a quarter uh, to just as to use for guiding it in the hole. So let's get going here on the lathe. Speed this lathe up a little bit. Put a little witness mark on here where I want to turn up to. Uh, size of that hole is two and a half inches, so we'll go a couple thousandths over that. Uh, we've got about a half inch to remove off this, so. Uh, Probably just do some 100,000 passes. And uh, get it down to size. All right, we're down to our last pass here. I'm just going to fuzz off a couple thousandths here. And hopefully this will give me a good uh, margin for a press fit. be fine for press fit. I'll be about two thousandths over. So now what I want to do is come in here and I want to relieve. I want to come in here. I want that press on shoulder to be about a half inch. So I'm just going to put a witness mark there that I can turn to. And we're going to we're going to turn this down about a hundred thousandths. Make it just a little bit smaller than the actual uh, bore that we're going into, and that will be used to align it in there. And I have a little threading tool here. I'm just going to use this to chamfer with uh, nothing special about it. I think I'll put a little, I want a nice chamfer on there to just kind of lead into that hole. And up here, I'm just going to put just a little bit of a chamfer. It doesn't need much. And heck, while I'm at it, I'm going to go ahead and chamfer uh, this one here just a little bit as well. Just break that corner. So now our steam pipe ring should fit up on here. We'll press that in place right there. Um, and that's, here's the other one, it's thicker, so that's still going to give me plenty of room in on the bottom. Alright, I like it. This is a 3164 drill bit, which uh, should be just a few thousand smaller than that uh, ratchet extension. Uh, and we can, should be able to press it right down through that hole. We've got a mark on the drill bit there where I want to go as far as depth. Right there. 
last step here, we're just going to part it off. All right, so we're going to press this uh, stem in here now. It should just go straight down in there. So it's a tight fit, but it's not super tight. So um, I mean, it'll be tight enough to hold it. All right. And we'll take a nut and washer, put it on the bottom, and tighten that up real good in the vise. So we just dropped the uh, steam pipe fitting over this now, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, press that fitting down in there. Let's see, I think I got enough room right here. And that should be a nice tight press fit on there. That's it. So here's our little adapter. It's holding our steam pipe fitting. Uh, this little flange on the bottom will drop down into the, the tube and that will help align it and keep it running right. And to power this, I've got a universal joint. Uh, here's the other half of that extension in my drill. Uh, we plugged all this together. and. Uh, I'm probably just going to show you real briefly here without actually doing it uh, at least, but I've got some, uh, this is just valve grinding compound. Uh, it's just a abrasive and a paste. I'll put that on here uh, and we'll then come in here and let me, let me zoom you in here and we'll show you this in action without any valve grinding compound, but just to kind of show you how it works. So hopefully I can show you this without getting in your way, but uh, that just drops down in the hole. And we can, uh, Grind away on it. Uh, and with the valve grinding compound, you just have to occasionally wipe it off on both sides, uh, put some fresh on there, and keep going until you get it uh, nice and polished on both surfaces. And when you do that, you'll have a good fit in between it. Uh, we're going to leave this. Uh, I've got another place I need to be, so I'm going to leave this to some of the guys that are here at the museum to do. Uh, and they need to do this for both the uh, upper and lower uh, steam pipe fitting. All right, guys, I think that's going to be a wrap for this uh, particular episode. Uh, like I said, we're going to let the museum get in here and finish lapping these out uh, since I've got to, going to need to be somewhere else for a little while. And if we get a chance, I'll try to shoot getting some video of us putting the, the pipe back in. But I think you get the principle of what we're doing. You know, again, these, uh, these uh, steam pipe fittings are going to allow them to kind of roll around in there and find that perfect seat uh, as the things expand and contract and as uh, it just all fits together like it's supposed to. Pretty ingenious setup and uh, it's been around for a long time. Like I said, I'm using technology and, and referencing uh, materials that goes back over 100 years uh, in, in doing the repairs on this and uh, still applicable even today. So with that, we'll talk to you guys later. Please give me a thumbs up on this. Like it if you give me a like. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already and leave some comments. We'll talk to you later. Thanks.